In this chapter, we'll be looking at how public health became a global phenomenon connecting countries rather than being confined to within individual countries. The knowledge of disease distribution and causation leading to strategies for prevention and control were the foundations of public health in any country. However, this knowledge and practice started spreading across the borders for application in other countries when colonization began to look at new territories to be conquered and occupied. Initially, this was a matter of curiosity, but then it became a compulsion of the colonizers not only to protect their own people who are now entering new lands, but also to try and protect the health of the people of those countries who were now an important economic resource for the colonizing country. However, international comparisons of disease patterns also became a matter of interest to see whether some countries had more of one disease versus the other, and this was called geographic pathology in the 19th century. This became the basis for modern epidemiology. The rise and spread of public health schools in the 20th century began with the Welch Rose Report of the United States in 1915. And that led to the establishment of schools of public health there. And Europe, which had some earlier schools of public health, also now started increasing the number of institutions imparting public health training. And soon, many other countries followed suit across all continents. Public health departments were established as part of health systems and started practice of public health through programs and started influencing policies. Global collaborations started rising rapidly in the second half of the 20th century as countries became much more interconnected and globalization increased the pace of that connectivity. However, public health, which began with a substantial interest in sanitation, became a much broader discipline. And even some of the major figures in public health at the national level had a worldview to begin with. Louis Pasteur, the father of the germ theory, which has greatly influenced public health and global public health in the 20th century, had said even earlier that science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. Rudolf Virchow, a German pathologist who also founded the Anthropological Society of Germany, said, if disease is an expression of individual life under unfavorable circumstances, then epidemics must be indicative of mass disturbances. He said these are artificial disturbances of mass culture. And he became the founder of social medicine. So from microbes to social determinants, public health now started unifying different streams of knowledge. We also recognize that this shift has taken place over two centuries with the initial interest in tropical medicine as a part of colonization to international health when high-income countries started looking at what the health problems of other countries are and trying to understand them to a period of intense collaboration in research as well as health system strengthening where people from rich countries were leading research programs in low- and middle-income countries and trying to translate that knowledge into health programs for which they set the agenda. But Baron Peter Piot, who is the director of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and knows the history right through of colonization to modern global public health, says that we must now enter a new phase where global health activities, including research, should be led by people from low- and middle-income countries. We recognize that even as these transitions are taking place in the nature of leadership of global public health, which is becoming a much more of a shared enterprise with low- and middle-income countries also emerging as leaders, public health itself has become a much broader discipline, both in terms of learning and practice. It unifies different fields, environmental and life sciences, epidemiology and allied sciences, humanities and social sciences, economics and management. 
For example, the knowledge now spreads from human health and nutrition, animal health, and planetary health using tools like epidemiology and biostatistics, data management, demography, to explore fields like health economics and financing, health systems management, health technologies, monitoring and evaluation, and of course, incorporating the strengths of social sciences like sociology, anthropology, behavioral and communication sciences. What are we really looking at in the domain of global health? Firstly, we are looking at trends in demographic transitions like aging of populations, of urbanization, and its influence on health, of different disease burdens, how are the profiles changing over time, risk factor trends, how are they tracking? Is tobacco consumption rising or falling? Social determinants of health. How is the environment influencing? How is education linked to changes in disease trends? National health systems response also becomes an important area in terms of the financial resources being allocated by countries and by international development assistance. Health workforce issues. Which are the countries facing a health workforce crisis? How is migration exacerbating that problem? What about access to drugs, vaccines, and technologies? Is it being impeded by some of the trade agreements? In terms of the designs of disease control programs, are they vertical programs which are siloed? Are they horizontal programs which are integrated? Or diagonal programs which combine one or two programs in a synergistic fashion? Public health emergencies, whether we are dealing with Ebola or SARS or H1N1, how are countries coping with some of these emergencies and how is global support coming in into this uh, area to provide enough support to these countries which are facing these epidemics? What about global health constructs? The flows of knowledge, technologies, services from one country to another. What about reverse innovation? As low and middle income countries are now becoming crucibles of innovation, how are products of knowledge and innovation moving now in the other direction to high-income countries. What about global cooperation? What are the remits of that cooperation, and how is it that influencing the autonomy of individual countries? What about governance? In terms of governance of health, of health systems, and governance for health in a multi-sectoral fashion. What about financing? Comparative financing of public financing for universal health coverage but also what is the nature of international development assistance? What about transnational determinants like trade, traffic, migration, conflict, communication? None of these are really confined now to one region, but are really transnational in every way. In terms of the initiatives and institutions which are now anchoring public health, we see many dimensions. For example, in order to provide global comparisons, and time trends, we see the global burden of disease estimates on a regular basis through the studies that are launched from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. We also have annual World Health Reports, which come from the WHO. In terms of global institutions, we see global governance being provided, of course, global support being provided by the World Health Organization, the World Bank, UNICEF, UNAIDS, UNFPA, and the Global Fund for AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. We also see international health regulations as an important element. This started with the International Sanitarian Conference in 1851 in Paris, when Europe was suddenly threatened with cholera outbreaks and epidemics. And we found that with the emergence of the World Health Organization, the international health regulations became much better codified, and the latest version of IHR has emerged in 2005. We have also seen the world's first global public health treaty in the form of the Framework Convention for Tobacco Control, which was adopted by several countries in 2003 and became an important treaty which came into force in 2005. In terms of global goals, we have seen the United Nations convene countries to adopt the Millennium Development Goals in 2000, and the Sustainable Development Goals were adopted in 2015. The global funding scene also has changed substantially, with bilateral and multilateral agencies now 
providing a fair amount of funding to countries in different regions of the world. And philanthropic foundations have emerged as major players in the last 20 years and have also started providing a lot of assistance to both health programs as well as capacity building. At the same time, we see transnational corporations influencing many of the determinants of health and ill health, particularly whether it's tobacco trade or trade in uh, fast foods which are injurious to health or beverages. We see there are many transnational influences that global health must now take into account. So how do we set the coordinates for global health, the GPS for global health, as we move along? We must understand, even in this era of great interest in genetics and molecular biology, that epigenetics or environmental influences on gene expression play a role, and that is related to public health. And we know that markets are also important in this era of great market dependency that we see, that we need market interventions to make drugs available at affordable prices. We need market interventions to curb the aggressive marketing of tobacco and fast foods. So the spectrum of research must stretch from molecules to markets to embrace all of public health. And the span of policy must range from persons to people to populations. That is, not just look at individuals, but at communities and at nations and at the whole human family. The arena of advocacy and action must extend from individual risk factors to human rights that actually all of us are entitled to. We recognize that common threats and ideals unite us as, as a human family. For example, there are common threats like pandemic threats, antimicrobial resistance, climate change, transnational marketing of unhealthy products, which affect us all. At the same time, we subscribe to certain values which are shared, like human rights, universal health coverage, social justice, sustainable development, and planetary survival. So in an increasingly interconnected and interdependent world, our common future calls for solidarity as the guiding spirit of global public health. As a very popular ride in the Disney world says, it is a small world after all.